Colleen Ballinger and you're watching my recap of America's Got Talent. Tonight 12 of the remaining 24 acts performed and the first person up was Andrew De Leon. He sounded amazing tonight. He did Ave Maria and it was perfect for his voice. They told him to lose the eyeliner emo look and I was shocked because I thought that was one of the main reasons he's gotten this far in the competition. Regardless if he loses the goth look or not, I thought he did an amazing job and you might be seeing him again. Todd Oliver, the ventriloquist, and his talking dog came on stage next. Todd Oliver came on and was like, ah, it's my show, I've got a talk show. And his dog was the special guest. He had some great one-liners and some good laughs, but I don't know if this act can beat out some of the other amazing talent that we saw tonight. Next up were Donovan and Rebecca, the acrobatic duo. Their strength blows my mind more than anything else. This woman was lifting him up off the ground with her abs of steel in heels. That, my friends, is impressive. Edon, the 14-year-old singer, was up next, and I just love him. <laughs> He came on with his little yarmulke and played the piano and sang That's What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction. I fell in love with him, as I always do with the little children. Wow, I just sounded like a pedophile. Anyway, he sounded amazing. <laughs> Scott Brothers were up next. They performed a funky, silvery, mannequin-like hip-hop pop and lock routine. I felt like the choreography was lacking a little bit because it started off a lot of pop and lock and a lot of um, isolation and I was expecting it to go a little bit more hip hop and it kind of just stuck with isolation like the rest of the time. It's like, watch me move my head like this. After them was Eric Diddleman, the mind reader. He had Howard color in a picture of himself and then revealed a picture that he had colored in earlier and they had matching colors almost. <laughs> it was good. I don't know if it was good enough. Next up was Turf. Here's my theory about Turf. I'm pretty sure he's not human. He makes his arm pop out of its socket and come out of his kneecap and then his foot comes out his ear and his stomach is in his butt. I don't know how he does it. He contorts himself in ways that are not humanly possible. He added more choreography this week, which I really appreciated because I felt like last time he was on stage, he didn't do enough choreography. And tonight, he did a great job. Everyone loved him. He was awesome. Bria Kelly, the 16-year-old singer, came on and she sang a pink song. She has a beautiful voice and she's very talented for a 16-year-old girl, but she was told by the judges that she lacked emotion when she was singing. Joe Castillo, the sand artist, was up after her and he made sand look like music notes and then he turned the music notes into a bird and then the bird into two people holding hands and then the hands into a little boy hugging an older man that Sharon Osbourne thought looked a lot like Jesus Christ. He clearly has talent, it's really beautiful artwork, and he always has some sort of storyline that goes along with it. I've never seen anything like it, and there's definitely nothing else like it in the competition. After him, we had William Close, who turns the entire theater into a musical instrument, and there are these massive strings going from the stage to the back of the theater. He also brought in some new instruments um, this week, which was pretty cool. I think that by sitting in our living room and watching it on a tiny television screen, we're missing out on the epicness that it must feel like to be in a theater that has been turned into a musical instrument. I got super excited tonight because I noticed that the women playing the drums were on point. If you're a ballerina and you can play the drums, you are top notch, the bee's knees, awesome-tastic. The comedian Tom Cotter graced the stage next. His routine was good, he had some good jokes, the audience seemed to like it, the judges seemed to really enjoy him. Thumbs up. The final act of the evening was the Academy of Villains. They were dressed in all red and black and they looked like mimes this week. They did a really, really cool routine. There are 30 of them, so the fact that they're able to pull off choreography with 30 dancers and it still looks impressive and clean is awesome. That is not an easy thing to do. That's my recap of America's Got Talent. Don't forget to like and favorite this video, subscribe to Dance On, and leave a comment. Tell me what you guys thought of the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week for another recap.